Shut up, bird. <sighs> Freaking birds. Hello, everyone. My name is Zach. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well today. Today I'm going to be doing a, another tag video. Sorry I did not realize I'd be doing a tag two weeks in a row, but uh, I created my original tag for last week and then I was tagged to do this tag and I wanted to get it out uh, relatively soon and also since it was the start of October I thought it would be seasonally appropriate so uh, you're just going to have to deal with having a, a tag two weeks in a row. Um, but also I uploaded a vlog last week too so like y'all can deal. This is the Pumpkin Spice Latte book tag created by Maddie over at The Book Pusher. Maddie's great, uh, I love her channel. Uh, me and her have been uh, really good friends as of late, so if you haven't checked out her channel already, you really should. Uh, she's absolutely savage, and she has really great thoughts on some books, and her rant reviews are impeccable, so uh, highly recommended. And she created this tag and asked me to do it, so uh, I'm more than happy to. So historically, I haven't actually been a big coffee fan, um, I tried it, like, I don't even know how long it's been, like, maybe ten years ago, five years ago, something along those lines, and I wasn't a big fan of it, but over these past few years, I've been more and more of a fan of coffee, so for this video, I wanted to actually go and get a pumpkin spice latte to try, and be it, uh, the way I try coffee again after all this time. Uh, unfortunately, as it turns out, pumpkin spice lattes from Starbucks are not gluten-free. As I'm sure a lot of you know already, I'm uh, severely gluten intolerant, so uh, unfortunately that means I can't drink it, which is a crock of horse shit if you ask me, but the, the universe is dumb sometimes, so I guess uh, a, a latte is uh, off the table for me. So instead, I looked around to a couple different chains and it turned out Dunkin' Donuts coffee is gluten-free and all their flavor swirls are gluten-free, so I ended up trying a uh, Dunkin Donuts hot coffee with pumpkin swirl and I also got almond milk in it because uh, if, you, if you watch Maddie's channel she uploaded a vlog for some readathon, I don't remember which one it was and uh, she showed her uh, putting almond milk in her coffee and she got like three or four comments of people like no not almond milk so it's kind of become like a running meme um, between uh, her and a couple of uh, us fans. Uh, so I thought if I'm trying coffee for a coffee tag for Maddie, uh, I had to get almond milk in it. So uh, I will take you to footage of that reaction now. Hmm, that's actually pretty good. I like this. Oh yeah. So that first sip reaction, um, they didn't stir it very well, so that first sip was mostly swirl, almond milk, and then just a little bit of coffee. As I drank more and more of it, it got uh, a little bit stronger. Um, I would say I did like it, um, but it's definitely going to be more of like an occasional thing, or maybe if someone wants to share one, I wouldn't mind doing that, or if I just really need a good caffeine kick, then I might get a small coffee, but it's not going to be a regular thing for me. Um, but yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. I actually liked it a lot more than I thought. Uh, it doesn't beat soda. Soda is still my drink of choice to rot my insides, but, you know, what are you going to do? We all have our own personal tastes and preferences. But with all of that out of the way, we got a tag to do, so let's get into it. So question number one is Pumpkin Spice Latte, and that is a book everyone likes to shit on but is delicious. So it being October and all, I thought what better author to talk about than to talk about Stephen King and to talk about one of the books of his I feel is the most underrated, and that is From a Buick 8. I've talked about this book at least once before on my channel, but a lot of people say it's one of his weakest books. It's got like a 3.4 something on Goodreads, and even Books and Lala said that uh, she thought this was one of the Stephen King books not worth your time, and I very much disagree. First of all, it's short. This book is about 350 pages, which uh, for a Stephen King novel is uh, actually really short. Um, but B, this book does horror a little bit differently than most of Stephen King's stories, where instead of having a monster that moves around and you're never quite sure uh, where it's going to strike, this features a Buick that is found by the police department, and they take it to the police station, and it starts to cause weird, horrific shit to happen. 
Uh, I can't really go into any more detail than that, otherwise it will spoil it. Um, but I thought it was really interesting to always know where the monster is and just not know when it's going to do the thing and not knowing exactly what it's doing um, versus just having a thing that's chasing you and trying to kill you. Uh, don't get me wrong, uh, there are plenty of books uh, in Stephen King's uh, bibliography that are uh, that use that concept and are very good at it, but uh, this was something a little different and I really enjoyed that. So um, don't read this as your first Stephen King book, but if you've read a couple Stephen King books and you're willing to try something a little different, or you want one that's short, um, <laughs> don't be afraid to maybe uh, look at your local used bookstore or your library and uh, try out a copy of From a Buick Gate. So question number two is, fall is my favorite season. And that is to talk about a cliche you cannot get enough of. So at first I was going to say zombies, but I don't know if that's really a cliche or if that's just like a trope. I don't know. So I've come up with a different one. And again, sticking with October and kind of uh, horror books, I absolutely love it in any horror story, whether it be a movie or a book or a game, when the character that sucks, he's a piece of shit, He's an asshole, uh, or she. One of those characters finally gets killed by whatever the threat is in that horror story. It is just so good to see that jerk finally bite the dust. Every time it happens, I just cheer. I love it so much. Cheering for someone dying. I'm just a, I'm just a happy fella, aren't I? But yeah, definitely that. When the jackass, piece of crap character in a horror story gets killed off, hopefully as horrifically as possible. That's one of my favorite cliches. Question number three is sweater weather in the AM and t-shirt weather by the time you get out of school or work. A book you thought was one thing but was completely different by the end. So I'm not sure if it's supposed to be that you start reading the book and you think it's one thing, but I'm gonna go with uh, a book that I went into thinking it was one thing and it ended up being something completely different. So we all know the saying, don't judge a book by its cover. I do it anyway. One of my favorite things is to take a book's title, cover, and tagline and kind of piece together what I think the book's about. So when I saw the cover of Alice Oseman's Radio Silence and I saw the tagline, Hello, I hope someone out there is listening, my first thought went to a movie called Frequency, which came out in the early 2000s. So the movie centers around a guy who finds an old two-way radio uh, locked in his closet and he dusts it off and sets it up and he finds that it still works and he finds someone to talk to on it. It turns out that through Aurora Borealis magic he's actually talking to his dad from the past and some things happen and he's able to kind of talk with his dad and his dad's kind of able to change what he did in the past and that impacts what's happening in current day. Uh, I've only seen bits and pieces of the movie but from what I've seen it's a, a really good movie. But going back to Radio Silence, I was like, oh, well, maybe it's like Frequency where uh, two characters are talking to each other on like a radio or a walkie talkie and one of them goes radio silent and the other goes on a road trip to uh, see if they're okay because the cover kind of has like a, a road thing going. Funny enough, sort of that is actually kind of right because there is a road trip to make sure someone's okay when they kind of go quiet. Um, but then I was told it was about podcasting and I thought okay well maybe it's about like a fan of a podcast and the podcast goes radio silent and they go try to find out what happened and part of that is also correct but really if you haven't read it I mean I'm sure most of you have because it's a big book here on booktube um really what I would say the book's about is about high school and deciding the course of your future and realizing that uh college may not be the right thing for you and you know podcasting does come into the plot a lot but uh it to me, it's not really about the podcast. It's about kind of school, the future, and kind of this college-pushing society that we have. So um, I was kind of wrong twice. <laughs> All right, question number four is spoops. Do you have a spooky book on your TBR? That's the question you ask? Oh, Maddie. Oh, Maddie, Maddie, Maddie. What you trying to say, Maddie? You think I'm some sort of spooky season fraud? You, you, you think I don't have one? Is that like a personal attack or something? I have quite a few here. I'm going to go through them all. Uh, this shelf here is actually all of my non-Stephen King, creepy, spooky, thrillery books. Yeah. I'm not going to talk about all the Stephen King books I have on my TBR because I actually plan on doing a Stephen King collection later on in the month. But I will quickly show you all the books that I have that I have not read that would fit in the kind of creepy spooky category. 
So I have A Part in the Dark by Anya Allborn. She's a newer horror author, and this is a collection of two novellas. World War Z by Max Brooks. I read part of this as a kid, but never finished it. I really like the Ultimate Zombie Survival Guide, so I'm looking forward to finishing this. House of Salt and Sorrows by Aaron A. Craig. Uh, this is going around booktube right now, and I've been told it's kind of sp uh, spooky and creepy, so I'm looking forward to getting to this. Next, we got two kind of expanded universe things for Mir Grant's uh, Newsflash World, and that's uh, Rise, which is a novella collection, and Feedback. Basically, it's an alternate story to the original book. I also have the first book in the Parasitology trilogy, which is uh, Parasite. Uh, if you didn't know, by the way, Mir Grant is a horror pseudonym for Shauna McGuire, so... There you go. And I'm obviously a big fan, if you can't tell. Here I have The Fireman by Joe Hill, who's actually Stephen King's son. Next we have a couple of books by Dean Koontz, who's another big author in the uh, horror community. Uh, we have book two in his Frankenstein series. I really liked book one, so I'm uh, looking forward to seeing what book two in the rest of the series is about. I have The Door to December. Here we have Shattered. I got this for 50 cents at a library sale, so. I also have Lightning by Dean Koontz. Uh, all I know is this is supposed to be one of his best, and it involves time travel. Here I have another novella. I have uh, The Battle of the Black Tom by Victor LaVale. Then I have Violin by Anne Rice. Then I have a short story collection by Edgar Allan Poe. And finally I have The Phantom of the Opera. This is just the dust jacket because I took it out because I had planned on starting it last night, uh, but didn't. And when I read hardcovers, obviously take the dust jacket off. I know some people don't do that and I don't know how you do it. Um, so, but there you go. I love this cover by the way, if you can see that. So that is all the books on my physical TBR that are spooky and creepy, with the exception of the Stephen King ones. Again, uh, that collection video should be coming out later this month. But I did leave one off because question number five is tarot reading, a five-star prediction. And for this question, I picked out another Mere Grand book that I've heard nothing but good things about, and that is Into the Drowning Deep, which is a apparently about a reality show where they go to hunt a ship that never returned after it went hunting for mermaids. And I think it's supposed to have, like, horror spooky scary mermaids sounds cool i'm into it and the very last question of the tag is the sephora sage and crystal set uh i'm gonna have to put the picture this thing is i don't know why it was controversial exactly or what i'm supposed to be seeing but this thing wrapped in paper to me it looks like a crack pipe so <laughs> i don't know how no one in marketing went no we cannot put that, that no absolutely not but i found it hilarious so uh, thank you to all the people marketing that missed that one. But the question that goes along with this is uh, a book that means well, but missed the market by a landslide. So last year when I first started getting into reading, I found out that our Garfunkel of Simon Garfunkel fame had just put out a book of his own, which is What is All But Luminous, Notes from an Underground Man. And I didn't know that much about our Garfunkel, despite the fact that I'm a really big Simon and Garfunkel fan. Like, I'm talking a really big fan. So when I found out that this had come out, I was pretty excited, and I picked it up, and I read the first 50 pages. So here's the thing. I made the assumption that this would be a, a memoir or an autobiography of some kind, and it's kind of like a, a memoir slash autobiography slash scrapbook slash diary excerpts told in whatever order Art Garfunkel pleases, so it doesn't even have, like, a, a, cl a clear progression, at least not the 50 pages I read, which there's only, like, 250 pages in this thing, so I don't know if it gets better. But uh, it comes off as the uh, Diary of a Crazy Man, um, which, to be fair, Art Garfunkel might just be a crazy man with a really good voice. I don't know. I haven't picked it up in over a year to try again, so... Um, if that doesn't qualify as missing the mark, I don't know it does, because I was very excited to get my hands on this. And then after 50 pages, was like, <laughs> no. So there you have it. That's the Pumpkin Spice Latte book tag, plus footage of me trying coffee again for the first time in a long time. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to tag some people. Last time I did a tag and tag people, no one did it. So I'm hoping to at least get one of y'all to actually do this. I'd, I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> So the first person I'm going to tag is Sam over at uh, Sarcasm in Sci-Fi. Uh, Sam is really nice. I got to meet her at BookNet Fest, and I've been watching her for a little while. So uh, she's very kind. Her channel is great. Uh, her channel centers around... You can figure it out. But anyway, uh, Sam, I would love to see you do this tag. I was going to tag a channel by the name of Broke in the Bookstore, but unfortunately... Uh, one of the creators of that channel has, uh, apparently had some things come up in her personal life, so she's having to split off. So I'm gonna tag, uh, Allie 
from Broke in the Bookstore, who's about to start her own channel, uh, Diagon Alley. So uh, if you like me, I'd really appreciate if you could go check her channel out and subscribe and encourage her to uh, get out and go for it again. It sucks having to start over, but uh, we stay in Alley and we hope that she does well on her own. But um, Alley, I'm tagging you as well. And then I'm also going to tag Savvy from Savvy Writes Books. Uh, Savvy is an author tuber. She's a small business owner, and she is freaking hilarious. So that is all for me today. I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you like it, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe if you feel so inclined. Feel free to check out all the channels that I mentioned. They will all be linked in the description, and I will see you next time.